Carolyn from Homesteading Family. This Thanksgiving season, feed your family real food by serving a fermented cranberry sauce instead of that stuff that comes out of the can with all the artificial flavors and colors. You will be surprised at how simple it is to substitute real food into your family's diet. Now one of the great things about making a fermented cranberry sauce is it only takes about two days, so you have plenty of time to get this done. You don't want to ferment fruit ferments very long because of the amount of sugar that's naturally in the fruit. It will go ahead and turn to alcohol if you leave it fermenting for too long. So we're going to go ahead and make this today. and. Um, after two days of fermenting, you're gonna to wanna to put this in the refrigerator, but that'll be just in time for Thanksgiving. So this is so simple. What I have here are two organic apples chopped up nice and roughly. I did not do them very um, finely. I like a bit of texture in my food. If you want them more fine, you're welcome to do that. And then I have two cups of chopped cranberries. And we're just gonna dump these all in here together. I also have about half a cup of chopped pecans. You could use walnuts. You could leave the nuts out altogether. Um, because we're fermenting this, you have a lot of flexibility with the recipe, what you wanna add and what you don't wanna add. You could put some dried fruit in here also, like some raisins, and make it more of a chutney with all those different textures and flavors. It would be really good. But for today, I'm just gonna go ahead with half a cup of roughly chopped pecans and dump that right in there. And then I am going to take about half a cup of apple cider. This is a sweet apple cider. You could use apple juice. If you didn't have either of those on hand, you could use um, just plain old water. That would be just fine. And in here, I also have a quarter of a cup of maple syrup. You could use a quarter of a cup honey. You could use plain old sugar if you wanted to. All of them will ferment just fine and give you a nice uh, you know, end product here. So I'm gonna just pour that in, make sure I get all of my maple syrup in there. There we go. I have about half a cup of a starter liquid. Now what is that? Because we don't want to add a ton of salt to fruit, that just wouldn't taste good, we need to go ahead and kick off that fermenting by putting something in it that already has the lactobacillus bacteria in that. So you could use whey, which the easiest way to get that for most people is to buy some non-Greek yogurt, don't use the Greek, with the live active cultures and um, pour that thin, clear liquid right off of it. That is the whey. The reason you don't want to use Greek is because Greek yogurt has had the whey drained off. That's what makes it thick and like Greek yogurt and not like regular yogurt. You could use some um, liquid from a previous ferment. If you have a sauerkraut or um, anything like that in the refrigerator, you could use a little bit of that liquid. It really won't change the final flavor that much using a sauerkraut. Um, using something like a uh, the juice off of a ginger carrot would be great, wouldn't it? That would add a nice little bit of ginger to it. So this is half a cup of whey from my homemade yogurt. And I'm gonna dump that in. And then we need about a teaspoon of good sea salt. And this is a Celtic sea salt right here. Please do not use iodized salt. That will ruin your ferment. It won't ferment correctly. So make sure you're using a good quality salt, please. And we're gonna go ahead and stir this up. Now, this is all there is to it. So simple. There's no cooking in this relish because we're fermenting it instead. So now I have my jar here, and this is a clean quart jar. And I'm going to go ahead and just transfer it right on in. Don't worry, my hands are clean too because I'm gonna use them. I always seem to have to to get things into my jars correctly. And we're just gonna go ahead and get that all the way in there. And let's see if we can pour it now. And the rest. And go ahead and pack it down a little bit. I don't have my right spoon today that fits right inside my jars. 
That would be helpful. Okay, now, because we always want our ferments to be under their liquid, we're gonna go ahead and top this off with a little bit more apple cider. Again, you could use juice, apple juice, and you could use, um, you could use just plain water if you didn't have that on hand. All right, we're gonna pour that up so that it is nicely covered. Now, you, if you have something handy, like one of these little airlocks that go right on the top of your jars, you can use that and that's gonna save you quite a bit of work because it's a little bit difficult to get this all the way under um, and stay all the way under its liquid. But the other alternative, if you don't have this, is to go ahead and just cap it with an airtight cap here. One of these two-part canning rings is great. And then about three times a day, what you're gonna wanna do is just turn it upside down a few times. And that's just to disorganize any colonies of mold that wanna start on the top. And just go ahead and mix it up. Make sure when you do that, you give it a little bit of a burp and open it up so that you can let any of those gases that have built up out. So you're gonna wanna do that two, three, four times a day, whenever you walk by that. Now, just leave this out on your counter and in a nice warm kitchen. And like I said, it will be ready in about two days. You'll see it start to bubble and start to do all sorts of interesting things. And um, then you can go ahead and put it in the refrigerator. Now, if you want at that two days, you can go ahead and taste it. Well, you can taste it at any point along the way. It's safe and it's done. Um, it's just not fermented yet. So you can go ahead and taste it though before you serve it and see if you wanna adjust the flavors for your family. If your family's not used to a fermented product, it, um, you could always add a little bit more sweetener right before you serve it to sweeten it up if you'd like to. Adding some of the raisins right at the end if you didn't ferment them with it would be another option to go ahead and sweeten this up if your family expects a sweeter cranberry sauce like most Americans do. Now, um, this is so good because not only is it going to be healthier for you, especially if you use a natural sweetener like the maple syrup or the honey, but it's also gonna help you to digest all of those other foods you're eating during that heavy Thanksgiving meal. Guys, have a great Thanksgiving. Take care and we'll talk to you soon.